when Allah, the exalted, the all wise, created the universe, He subhanahu wa ta'ala legislated an integrated system that did not leave any aspect of life unaddressed. And He the Almighty made this system adequate and can cope with any situation at any given time or place. And he subhanahu wa ta'ala made the implementation of such a system a means for mankind to establish stability in their lives and achieve prosperity. One of the aspects, one of the aspects of Sharia that reflects its comprehensiveness and inclusiveness is that pertaining to the relationship between mankind and the surrounding environment. You see, Islam, through the Qur'an and the Sunnah, clarified the proper manner for dealing with the environment. And thus, Islam enjoined and encouraged preserving the environment and the state upon which Allah had created it pure, clean, beneficial, and forbade tampering with this, with this, forbade corrupting it and ruining it in any form or shape. Because benefiting and utilizing the environment whilst maintaining it and preserving it in the state upon which Allah had created it, is a part of a comprehensive system of rights which Allah Azza wa Jal obliged mankind to implement, apply, and live according to. <coughs> to highlight and encourage the preservation of the rights of the environment, Islam made fulfilling parts of these rights a sign of one's faith. In the books of Al-Imam Al-Bukhari and Muslim, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Al-Imanu Sittuna Aw Qala Sab'una Shu'ba Faith is 60 or 70 branches. A'laha shahadatu an la ilaha illa Allah the highest, the uppermost, is to testify that none is worthy of worship but Allah, and that Muhammad ﷺ is his messenger. وَأَدْنَاهَا And the least level, إِمَاطَةُ الْأَذَى عَنِ الطَّرِيقِ Removing harmful objects from the street or from the roads. So a sign of one's faith is to fulfill the rights of the environment. Developing the environment, enriching the environment is one of its rights. In the books of Al Imam Al Bukhari and Muslim, 
The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Never would a Muslim plant a tree or sow a seed and then a bird, a human being, or an animal eats from it except that Allah Azza wa Jal will write for him, will record for him a reward. The Prophet ﷺ also said, whoever possesses a land, then let him grow trees in it. If this is not an encouragement, encouragement to develop the environment, I don't know what it would be. Another right the environment has upon us is not to pollute it. For example, with regards to water, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and this is reported by an Imam Muslim, he said, no one should urinate in stagnant water. We are forbidding from doing so. Why? Because this spreads pollution, contaminates the environment. Spreads diseases. Also in the book of Imam Muslim, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Beware of the two things that cause a curse." People said, "What are these two things, O Messenger of Allah, that cause a curse?" He said, "Relieving oneself on the road." And relieving oneself in shades. Meaning, beware of committing either of these two. Places where people pass and places where people or animals can rest under the shade of a tree or what have you. Shaded areas like in some public places on beaches or in public parks. So we are not permitted to pollute the environment. Another right is to keep the environment clean. The Prophet wasallam. And this is reported also in the book of Al Imam Muslim. He وسلم, said, I was made to see the deeds of my ummah, the good of it and the evil of it. And I saw that the best of the deeds, look at this encouragement. He said, I saw that the best of these deeds is to remove harmful objects from the road. But since being clean is something that emanates or starts from the individual, the instruction came directly to us pertaining to our private lives in the book of Al Imam al Tirmidhi and classified as authentic by Al Albani. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah is clean and likes cleanness, cleanness. So clean your courtyards. There is no such a system in the world that has all these instructions pertaining to the environment. Islam, as we said previously in different khutbas, Islam is not a set of rituals. It's not coming to the masjid, performing pilgrimage, fasting Ramadan and paying your zakah and say, Alhamdulillah, I have done Islam. Islam is a way of life. Another right is not to be excessive when benefiting from the resources of the environment. 
The Prophet وسلم, and this is reported by Imam Ahmed, classified as sound by Al-Albani, passed by Sa'd radiallahu anhu whilst he was performing wudu. He said to him, Oh Sa'd, what is this israf, excessive usage of water? You're exaggerating. He said, Oh Messenger of Allah, is there excessiveness? Exaggeration in water when we're performing wudu? He said, yes, even if you're performing wudu from a river, you should not be excessive and you should not exaggerate in your usage. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, and this is another right. Preserving the trees in the environment. When he set his, sent his uh, army leaders to, the, uh, to greater uh, Syria, Bilad al-Sham, he commanded them with two things. Not to cut trees. Now this is a war. He said, do not cut trees and do not submerge plants and crops with water. Our objective is the enemy, not the trees and people's source of livelihood and people's provision. Nowadays, in wars, some countries deliberately uproot trees, burn them, cut them as a way of punishing the residents of that country. But Islam taught us to be lofty in our manners even with trees. Not to violate the rights of the environment that Allah Azza wa Jal facilitated for our benefit and for our usage aqulu ma tasma'una wa astaghfirullah fastaghfiruhu innahu huwal ghafurur rahim alhamdulillah rabbil alamin was salatu was salam ala khatam al anbiya wal mursalin sayyidina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in incentives given to implement and preserve the rights of the environment. The Prophet Sallallahu said, and this is reported by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. He said, whilst a man was walking on the street, he saw a thorny branch of a tree, that is, on the road, so he removed it. He cleaned the road. He kept the environment clean. What was the result? قَالَ فَشَكَرَ اللَّهُ لَهُ فَغَفَرَ لَهُ Allah is grateful for this. And thus he forgave his sins. And when the Prophet ﷺ was listing the deeds that count as acts of charity, and this is also in al -book, the books of Al-Bukhari and Muslim, he counted one of them to be removing harmful objects from the paths of people. On the other hand, Islam set very strict punishments for those who violate the rights of the environment. In the book of Al Imam Al Bayhaqi, and it's classified as authentic by Al Albani, the Prophet وسلم, said, Whoever cuts a tree, Without a benefit or a need, that is. Whoever cuts a tree, Allah will throw him into hell on his head. So that we preserve our environment and protect it. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, also said, and this is also reported by Al Bayhaqi, classified as sound by Al Albani. He said, whoever harms the believers 
and their roads and their paths and their streets, he becomes deserving of the curse. Al Imam Al Munawi, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, said, Harming the believers in their streets includes placing things that are harmful on the street, rocks, tree branches, or filth, like urinating or defecating on the street. Nowadays, you see people on the beach, in public parks, in parking lots, they empty their uh, trash compartment, they throw their trash bags or whatever, if they have bags in the cars. And they're so lazy to drive, we're not asking them to walk, to drive to the closest dumpster and put this trash and rubbish into it to maintain the environment clean. This is a protection for me and you. It protects me and you from diseases. Islam, as we started saying, and with it we conclude, is a code of life. This set, the comprehensive set of rights that we have addressed over the past three months, shows that this is a divine law coming from the Creator, the All-Wise, He know, who knows what benefits and what harms His creations. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us amongst those who adhere to His instructions and refrain from all prohibitions. Allahumma ameen.